all the land. Here we have two teeth that were deemed non-restorable from our endodontist. Uh, don't we all love posts? Uh, I probably do more implants on teeth that have posts than anything else. And we oftentimes will see a, a horizontal fracture um, at the post line. And um, we are going to actually have to remove these teeth. Well, what are we gonna do when we remove them? Here I'm taking my physics forcep and I'm going to do my A traumatic quote unquote extraction techniques where I'm engaging the beak of the instrument, one to three millimeters subgingival on the palatal aspect of this particular root. I'm putting the bumper as high up the vestibule as possible, never squeezing the instrument and simply rotating my wrist towards the corner of the eye. This is going to create the energy that is going to luxate that tooth up and out of the socket, um, up and out of the socket. And the instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total. Rather, it's intended simply to, to break down the periodontal ligament. I will then take what we call a tooth delivery instrument. And it's simply a bird beak uh, forcep and the tooth will come up and out of the socket. And we remove a two rooted uh, first bicuspid tooth Again, atraumatically in a matter of seconds, if not minute or so. Now, we have to evaluate this site. We want to evaluate the facial plate of bone. Um, we take a periapical radiograph, digital radiograph. Okay, it looks like the teeth are gone. There's no roots there. But we have missing facial plate of bone. Not that I damaged it, not with my extraction techniques, but rather it was destroyed because the facial plate of bone was very thin and that fracture uh, um, resulted in loss of the facial plate of bone. So here I'm taking an Orban knife, and, and Kurt, I think you'll have this in, in the surgical kit, and I'm making a nice clean incision so that I can create a what I like to call a envelope flap. So I am not making any vertical incisions in my reflection of this, these two sockets. I'm simply elevating. Now, this is something very important. You have to feel comfortable peeling this tissue away as if you were peeling an orange, so to speak. I need to see the entire defect. However, I do not want to incise into mucosal tissue. Once you incise, cut into mucosal tissue, the patient will experience postoperative discomfort to a serious level because histamine and prostaglandins are released. It's a physiologic reaction. However, if I do not incise into that um, mucosal tissue, my patients, and I'm telling you very honestly, do not experience postoperative discomfort to any high degree. I will give 600 milligrams of ibuprofen three times a day as needed for discomfort. And it is amazing the response you will get from your patients. You're kidding, the tooth is out. You'll call that patient that evening, Dr. Kaczynski, this is great. I really don't experience a lot of discomfort. So patient management, soft tissue management is a critical aspect. So you can see I'm taking a periosteal elevator again in my surgical kit, and I'm elevating that tissue beyond the defect. Beyond the defect is the uh, important sentence here. I'm gonna do that facially and palatally. You must feel comfortable doing this, but you can see there's not a lot of bleeding. There's, there's a good control of the soft tissue as if you had a number 10 envelope and you blew into it. So you're opening the area up because if we're missing a facial plate of bone, I can grow, you can grow a facial plate of bone predictably. I'm gonna say 100% of the time if you follow the, the recipe that I'm gonna give you. We must protect any graft material from invagination of epithelium. Epithelium grows about 10 times faster than bone. Bone will heal from the apex towards the crest. Epithelium will grow from the crest towards the apex, and it's a race, and tissue will always win. So what we will do is we will protect that grafted material with a membrane, a Band-Aid, so to speak, that will prevent invagination of the epithelium into the grafted material. That allows osteoclasts to invade and osteoclasts will stimulate osteoblastic activity and the material that you are placing into that socket area will, will conform or create new bone over a period of time, usually three, four, five months um, to period of time. So again, this is not an implant training course, but I, you can see I immediately placed implants into those sockets. 
but you can also clearly see I have no facial wall on my implants at all. I have initial stability. The stability of an implant comes from the apical two millimeters of any implant system. Um, so I'm getting initial stability, initial torque, so to speak, but you can see I have a definite defect, both palatally and facially. Passively place this pre-cut membrane beyond the defect. This membrane must extend at least two millimeters beyond the, the defect. This will allow initial stability. I will then use that membrane as my new facial wall and I'm taking my wetted allograft material and building a new wall. I'm then going to fold my membrane over the top, over the crest, onto the palatal surface. Again, it must extend at least two millimeters beyond any defect. This membrane must be passively placed. You can see my suturing technique. You don't want to go through the membrane. Rather, you want to place the sutures on top of the membrane to hold it down. So you can see my reverse cutting needle. I'm going from crestal to the facial, sliding over the top of my membrane, and then simply turning the needle around and doing the same thing on the palatal aspect, which allows me to get closure. Now, very important. I do not have primary closure here. I think we all agree. How, the reason is I do not want to pull that facial tissue towards the crest. Why? Because again, another rule, attached gingiva on the facial aspect of the implant is essential. I must have at least a two millimeter band of attached gingiva on the facial aspect of any implant for periodontal health. Because these membranes are long lasting, a la lasting more than six weeks, epithelium will grow very quickly over the top of it. Epithelium will grow a half a millimeter to a millimeter a day. So when I do suture removal, essentially that epithelium will reconnect and the area will be protected. I let the site, the implants heal in this particular situation for four months. The laboratory then fabricated two nice custom milled uh, abutments. You're looking at my Margins are at or slightly subgingival, and the laboratory fabricated two nice zirconia bruxer crowns, which create function and aesthetics for our patients.